Hi, my name is Aman and I'm a Chartered Professional Accountant practicing in the Metro Vancouver region of British Columbia, Canada. In this video, I will talk about Director's responsibility to remit payroll taxes to the Canada Revenue Agency, which can assess a penalty when the remittances are received later than the scheduled date. If you are the director of your company, you might already know that being the director of a corporation comes with certain privileges and responsibilities. You have a duty to ensure that source withholdings, including GST, HST, etc., are collected by the company and remitted to the tax authorities in a timely fashion. Failure to do so might make you personally responsible. The case of Burnett versus the Queen is an interesting example of a director needing to understand his obligations extend fully. Mr. Burnett was a capital markets advisor focusing on helping emerging companies to go public. He was appointed a director of many private and public corporations throughout his 30-year-old career. In year 2010, Mr. Burnett joined Canadian Noble Cut Diamonds, in short form CNCD. He invested $100,000 and raised another $1 million of financing for the company. Mr. Burnett was appointed director and at the executive level, treasurer and secretary of CNCD. He did monthly informal meetings with the other two board members. The board of directors did not prepare the minutes of the meetings. Instead, each board member just kept their own notes, although none of those notes were actually introduced as evidence in the court. Now, Mr. Burnaby testified that at each meeting, he did his due diligence as he asked whether the payroll source remittances were current and was assured that they were. So he qualified this as the check the box questioning approach. Moreover, he testified that although he occupied the secretary and treasurer positions, he was not a signing officer and also did not have access to CNCD's bank account. You see, Mr. Burnett viewed himself as an outside director with no involvement in CNCD's operations. The other point emphasized by Mr. Burnett was that, in his view, the payroll remittances were small compared to other issues that primarily occupied his attention, which primarily involved taking necessary steps to help the company go public, such as getting audited financial statements of CNCD prepared. To that end, the evidence showed that CNCD had issues in providing reliable books and records as early as 2011. The key issue in this case was whether Mr. Burnett could use the defense of due diligence to protect himself from the liability. Well, the court found that he could not because he did not exercise the degree of care and diligence to prevent the failure to remit that a prudent person would have recognized in similar circumstances. By January 2011, a reasonably prudent person in like circumstances, that is having been a director for at least four months and having increased concern as to CNCD's continuing inability to generate auditable financial statements, would have gone beyond the check the box stage and have sought documentary proof of payroll remittance and absent same, have promptly contacted or caused to be contacted CRA to ascertain whether payroll remittances were current or not. So the court found that CNCD's inability to provide reliable books and records for the preparation of the financial statements should have been a red flag for the director. So the defense of due diligence did not apply in this case as it was not shown that he was concerned for the tax remittances. Asking routine questions and ignoring the red flags because the amounts are not material or the, just saying that the responsibility fell onto someone else is not showing concern. If the circumstances warrant, a director has a duty to go as far as communicating directly 
with the tax authorities to ensure that remittances were being made. The standard of care is an objective one, referring to what a reasonably prudent person would have done in the circumstances. If your business fails, it is important to make sure that you resign as a director. The assessments appear to have been issued in 2017 and the business failed back in 2012. So a 2012 resignation would have cured the issue via the two year limitation period. Even as an outside director, once financial or bookkeeping problems arise, it is critical to make oneself personally and directly aware of the status of remittance. The tax code of Canada generally holds directors to a high standard once they are adverted to the risk that remittances are failing. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. If you want to be notified about my new tax updates, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Bye.